Now, on Monday, a judge at Blackfriars Crown Court asked a woman to stand down from the jury because she was not prepared to remove the veil on niqab covering all her head except her eyes. The trial was for an attempted murder, and the judge said it was desirable that the court could see her facial expressions. Is a niqab a barrier to justice? Barbara, why do you think it is? Well, the judge is applying judicial guidance, which is given by the Judicial Studies Board for judges in this situation. And what the judge was having to think about was the right of the defendant to a fair trial. Uh, and the UK court process is very much based on face-to-face -face encounters where people call evidence in front of a live jury and a judge. Mm -hmm. And the jury and the judge have to assess that evidence and decide whose side they prefer. Um, and I think what the judge was thinking about was, well, putting myself in the position of the defendant, how comfortable would I feel giving my side of the story in front of an audience, some of whose faces I couldn't see and I couldn't see how they were reacting to what I was saying. Do you have to see all of them? I mean, I can Perhaps people can understand if the entire jury had their faces covered, but one out of 11, surely you, you, you would get an impression. Well, it's an all or nothing principle, Is because it? that one person's view might be decisive in the discussions in the jury room afterwards. So I think what the judge was trying to do yeah. was to ensure a fair trial. It may be that when that particular lady was called to jury service, it may not have been fully explained to her that the judge reserved the right to consider these issues and to, to form a view, because he's the judge and ultimately he has to decide these things. And people may not be happy with his decision, but it's his duty to make that decision. So maybe she didn't have that fully explained to her. In other cases, it may not be such an issue. Miriam Francois Sarai, if it's an all or nothing situation, if it is a point of principle, do you think somebody, anybody, whether it be for religious reasons, whatever reasons, should be allowed to cover their face in a courtroom if they so desire? Jedi Knight, whatever. Um, I think there are very good reasons that might be applicable for asking women to remove uh, the face veil in a, in a court of law. And I think it's a testimony to, our, uh, to the judicial service that there's very fair guidelines in that regard. So I think that's a very positive thing. The only thing really with regard to this case is that I, I'm not sure that the argument that he wasn't able to read her facial expressions was a particularly legitimate one. That's the only reason really I would take issue with it. I would say what about my friend who's an excellent poker player and has fantastic poker face. You couldn't read his facial expressions. I'm not certain he would have been asked to leave the courtroom. Well, it also begs the question of a blind judge. You know, is a blind judge unable therefore to uh, rule in a case? Mary, and this finally, wasn't a poker game. This yeah. was a trial for murder. Yeah, no, so we're talking about being able to read people's issue. facial expressions. Yeah. If you're not able to read facial expressions, besides which, it also begs the question of what if you're misreading people's facial expressions? Surely you shouldn't be well, premising it on your interpretation. It's really important evidence. Um, you said this is not, this is not a poker game. It's... No, it's, it's a court of law. It's a really formal process. And moreover, it's a really important oral tradition which needs respect. The, the, so. There's no issue with in this, in this country, we have a very fair system, which is based on avoiding the rule of the tyranny of the majority, and we do that by protecting the rights of minorities, and that means allowing them to live out their religious identities to the fullest extent, as long as it doesn't harm others. Exactly. In this particular case, the, okay, your question, let's, let's, your question is posed, but I'm not sure this particular case that I was convinced by the judge's reasoning, because I think it rests on the problematization of the face veil in public discourse, so that which every we'll time we see to. it, we think it's an issue. Which which will come it wouldn't on to matter what her reasons were for wearing the veil, whether it was religious or for some other reason. She might have a facial disfigurement, say. In which yeah. case you might not be able to read her facial expressions either. Should Precisely. she be dismissed upon those but grounds? the judge's opinion is that all the juries are a jury of equal peers. They sit well, in judgment on someone. Evidently not equal peers. She's well, trying to participate in her well, civic duty like everybody else and she's being denied let's that. Right? Explore no, that. Let's explore that. She has a strange set that else. there are certain oh. rules in the system in which she wants to engage. Oh. And if she wants to sit in judgment, it's then she must oh. yeah, do yeah, it yeah, in the same yeah, way as yeah, everybody yeah. else. So how, yeah. That the judge can also take other steps rather than just asking the, the jury to stand down. He can ask for any adaptation that the court can actually apply. For example, maybe uh, uh, talking behind a curtain if it's oh, an if issue giving of evidence, hearing. Definitely. Or, uh, if, if you're giving evidence, of, that's different. If it's facial yeah. expression, for example, very, very crucial mm. for mm. the evidence mm -hmm. or for the victim. Then there is other ways, mm. for example, of video link that they can use sure. in mm. the court Special measures. and uh, so, so uh, only showing to the judge mm. or to who are concerned about it. If somebody asked you then if you were serving on a jury, if, if, it, if a judge said would you remove your veil, would you remove it? I mean it 
depends on the situation. It yep. depends. Uh, now, each situation has to be considered individually. Sometimes, if it's crucial, very crucial for the, the interest of the victim. Do you think the other jurors should be allowed to see your face as you deliberate in the jury room? I mean, it de I, I, again, it depends on the situation. If it's really crucial, then yes, it's not a problem to take it off. Mm. If it's really, really crucial for the victim interest. Okay. I mean, I think uh, I think it's really interesting because it shows that it's not allowing me to bring out Adrian. He's been down to come back. in. Yes, uh, uh, international law expert. Yeah. I, I, I think that the problem here is that you're you're making a preference for a minority, a system that has to be equal and formal. Well, shouldn't we do that? Shouldn't we have some cultural allowances no, in our I society? Think, I, not on this front. I think the NICAP, going to a broader issue, NICAP and the Burqa are about about female subjugation in a country which had a long history, a tradition of female rights, going back to Mary Wollstonecraft 200 years ago. What does it say that somebody walks down the street of Britain today when equality of gender is now you know, almost, almost a settled issue. Excuse me, you're not uh, going an issue of gender lessons today. I, I feel that this is wrong today. We women women have a right mind to wear this. Oh, oh, okay, so, so let's bring Susan. Women should be kept out of the L workforce uh, and we can avoid Susan, I like Susan to come in. You used to. Yeah, it's interesting because he's, he's broadened the issue. It's a joke. He's broadened the issue, and Miriam's not happy. No, and I don't think you are either. I would just like to say, for, for that work, point, so let's, can let's we hear, ask Andy Carvey's sister, are you, are you oppressed, my dear? Uh, not at all, definitely. Well, there the you go, is, then. The thing is, I, I should be, request. even in the court, I should be given the option or the choice whether to take it off or not. No one, and, and no one Because your religion you does not require you to do this. To it's a matter of personal Okay, so let, wait, wait, listen, wait, wait a minute, please, everyone. We're all speaking at once. I want to explore this a little bit, because an Anthony, I will come to you in some hands in the audience as well. You used to wear it, didn't you, yeah. Susan? And you said that you felt incredibly protected. Yes. Explain that. I wore the niqab for a personal spiritual reason. It's got nothing to do with anybody else. I put it on and I felt special. I felt closer to God. I felt that this was the way that I wanted to express my religious beliefs. And it didn't say anything to anybody else. And I took it off because I became, began to suffer from abuse from people spitting at me in the street. Um, I've, been, I've had stones thrown at me. I mean, I'm quite used to being called names. I don't care about names. But I think... You should care. We should all care that she's been called. Well, I just Can didn't. I ask you about something else as well? It's the, the, the modesty aspect mm. of it. And would you mind we had a conversation over a yeah. very pleasant cup of coffee earlier on. And you were saying that it also takes a certain thing out of the conversation with a, with a male. It takes out the, you, you called it the, the for, a do her factor. Yeah. What do you mean by that? It takes that out of the equation, you when say. I'm what do you mean? It's not just men, obviously. I think it, you're taking away that, that judgment. I don't want to be walking down the street and have a stranger say to me, or, or think, ugh, well, I'd kick that out of bed, I tell you that. Or, uh, I don't really think that's... Uh, or she didn't, she didn't put her makeup on well today, or she hasn't brushed her hair. Or Isn't she that a little bit good. insulting of men to think yes. that all men behave say, like that? Yeah. I didn't I say mean, just men, mm. I said women as well. Judgmentalism. Yeah, and I think being mentally, judgmental. we all judge. And I don't want to be judged. I don't want to be judged on my appearance. Anthony, her name. I think it's all about choice and uh, a woman's right to choose. And I think what we've just heard is that women have a right to choose whether they want to wear it or they don't. And the tradition that my friend has been talking about, this great tradition of Mary Wollstonecraft and feminism, is actually about women having the right to choose. And if women here are saying, we want to wear it, we live in a, we are proud of our democratic tradition that says, yes, you can, you can wear it, and we should be tolerant, and that Britain is based on tolerance. Good morning. What would you like to say? Hi. Can I just say that I'm a Muslim as well. I'm, I'm quite more Western. But I agree with the fact the reason why they're wearing niqab. In Islam, it says not compulsory, but it's their choice and their courage to make the choice of human rights, choose whether they want to wear it or not. But in which legislation or which policy does it state that you are entitled not to wear a certain item or you have to take, remove a certain item? Mm. Where does it state that, that well, you've got to remove a certain item of clothing? But you're not allowed to wear a crash helmet I mean, or a balaclava. But then, you, should be remo That's, I mean, then yeah. you, should, you, you can come into other cultures like remove a turban, remove yeah. a Jew's hat. You can, you know, see the face, you can right? go into a multicultural yeah. society. But why is it that it's a barrier just to Islam and justice? Mm. And uh, yes, lady there. Good morning. Yes, Hi. hello. I mean, I speak as a magistrate and I, we deal with these issues you know, kind of daily. 
And, uh, you know, I believe in women's rights. I'm a woman myself. I've worked for women's rights. I've just come from the Commission on the Status of Women, where we're working for women's rights and the right to choose. But in a court situation, one of the difficulties that we have um, is that people cannot be identified and if their faces are covered. And this is an issue for us as magistrates and accusers, people who are accusing, I'm not necessarily jury, we don't work with a jury in a magistrate's court, mm -hmm. but certainly witnesses, if a person is actually making an accusation against somebody or they're a witness, the person who is the defendant has a right to know who that is and to I see agree. that. I agree with that. We all agree. We all agree on that. Mark, Mark, Mark Jackson. I totally agree with that. I believe that, you know, if you're going into the court, the court of law, and the judge asks you to remove your niqab, then I don't see a problem in, with that. You know, you, we are living in the United Kingdom, and he's part of our judge and jury. I can't go over to Dubai and do what I would like to do. That's their okay, country, and I have to respect... Confusion. What would you like these to do, are, Michael? These are English well, citizens. Well, you're not allowed to, you know, to do certain things in Dubai, and obviously I have to abide by that. Yeah. And if I go into the court there and they tell me to do I have to do it. Michael, they're, they're not foreign. They are British. They're your fellow citizens here talking. They're not yep. foreigners from Dubai. They're entitled to have an opinion on how so. their judicial services run. The issue here is we should point out that there is a unanimity here on the fact that if a judge asks for legitimate reasons for the niqab to be lifted, that people ought to lift it. Everyone here agrees. The young yeah. woman in this particular case said, fine, I'll leave. It wasn't even a problem. It is us as a society. Problematization of this discourse. We're making the niqab into this major issue when it's not. And you're suggesting that you deal with it daily. I mean, I find it hard to believe there are 0.3% or less of women in this country who actually wear it. The suggestion that it's a major problem facing us is masking very Adjit. serious issues we should be tackling. Adjit. Adjit, Adjit, Adjit. I think Michael's hit the nail on the head. I think this is about, you know, what are traditional values of openness and transparency in British culture. I think that when we have new cultures coming in over mm. the last 50 years because of mass immigration, it is up to them to change to what the standards of this country are. It is not about, it is not about <laughs> everyone changing for the minority. But isn't it, uh, don't, we have, don't we cherish the, the traditions in this uh, country as well? I, I saw your hand. I'll come to you in a, in a moment or two. Don't we cherish the traditions of freedom of expression? Isn't this a manifestation of freedom of expression? No, no because men don't wear burqas on the caps. You see, this is about gen I mean, this is a gen this is a specific gender stigmatisation issue. Can I, can and this is this is why I said this is why. Can I, can I explain something here? First of all, we have to know that wearing the niqab is an act of worship before a modesty. Okay, so I am wearing my niqab to freely practice what something that I truly and deeply believe in. And I, should, I think I should have the right to practice it. Then the modesty come as a second reason for it. Mm. So that is different between men and women. For me, it's just an act of worship. And I, what I, about I, these, if I can explore this, because, you know, it, it's, it's good to sort of try and seek the enlightenment uh, through, through discourse, as you say, and, and to remove the problematization, which is the word you used several times this morning. Yes. Um, when we see somebody who's completely covered up walking along the street, a, a woman with her husband, and he's wearing the loafers and the designer jeans and the open neck, short sleeved shirt, why isn't he being modest? It's his choice. Sorry? It, it, that's his choice. He's chosen but not there's, to there's do There's an that. inconsistency of modesty no, in, okay, that, in they're that. two different people. They're two different people that's with a totally different relationship to yeah. God. Okay. And they have both chosen a different way. And, and because my sister here is a niqab, don't think that she's any better a Muslim mm. than my sister over there who's this, not this a niqab at all. This is about a cultural practice that treats women differently It's not men. a cultural and practice. Or a religious practice that treats, even if it's a religious it's practice, we should not treat not. women differently to men. Abdul, they should be treated you, equally. You want to resonate the tradition that, of Enoch Powell in this country. What are you talking to us about? Wait, 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 the traditions of this country, men, women do not cover themselves. Free, the freedom of expression um, is a tradition of this, this country. Is not, this is not about freedom of expression. This is about saying that women are different to men. I think that is fundamentally wrong. We have to... We have to I think, uh, Johnny uh, Johnny Johnny Michi, I, I think you have to be really careful. Uh, as an atheist, perhaps I don't have a, a, a place to even talk on this issue. But I would say this. We have to be very careful when we pontificate about the traditions of any country. Mm -hmm. Because, frankly, if you look back in our history, and you don't have to go very far in Britain. All of a sudden, some very, very ugly things come about. All of a sudden, the idea that 
um, some cultures subjugate women becomes absurd because you don't have to look very far back in our own culture to realize, in our own history, to realize but we did exactly those same things. But there's a reason why Britain doesn't do that anymore, and that's because we've had the Enlightenment. We put religion in its box, and we've decided that re religious values do not affect all aspects of our society and our political discourse. And this is an example of a minority which hasn't gone through that process of enlightenment, of, you know, the, of, 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 of David Hume, Adam Locke, you know, the, the whole sorry, idea of the modern Western life. Adam about Locke. What the sorry, sorry, John Locke. John Locke. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Adam Smith, John Locke. Adam, Adam, Adam Locke was in Europe. Carla, Carla. I think it was probably the Muslim community in Spain that introduced the enlightenment to Western Europe. I think it's really to wake up about um, enlightenment and Islam not being enlightened. And also, if you just want well, to Well, in Saudi Arabia, modern... there's a cleric in Saudi Arabia who said that this does not go, the niqab does not go. He's a leading cleric, and I've got his name written down somewhere. Mohammed al habadad that's his name. He said that this does not go far enough. He said a woman, sh woman should only show one eye. Yes. Uh, no, now, how, 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 how enlightened is that? that uh, we are very misogynistic scholars within the Muslim community, but may I just say that what you just said, that you've got British women, girls, walking around wearing not even shorts, but their underwear in public the minute summer hits the street. And the boys are not walking around in their underwear. They're not in their speedos. They've got proper trousers and shirts on. And girls have been sexualized to a completely insane position in our country, highest rate of teenage pregnancy, where girls think that they cannot walk down the street until they've got every other But that's also freedom of choice, isn't it? Yeah, but we're not complaining about them, are we? Mm. If a girl comes in a miniskirt in, as a juror and sits there, nobody's going to ask that you are sexualizing the jury. And secondly, can I say that witnesses, that if somebody is giving witness in court, if okay. somebody is giving witness or is a defendant or whatever, Yes, it makes sense that we need to be able to see their face, but a juror yeah. who is actually listening and making a decision does not Barbara need Houston. to be making any sort of facial Barbara Houston. Actually, I totally disagree. If you've ever been in front of an audience and, and tried to persuade them, you need to see how they're reacting to what you're saying. And if one person's face is covered, then they've got an unfair relationship with the person who's being tried. And the person who's being tried, their rights are, are really paramount in that process because they could go to jail. Their lives could be destroyed by what goes there was on. A, there was a case, so that's actually. That's why it's important in court because the jury is a kind of judge yeah. and they are performing a public function. There was a case, actually, Barbara. Important. I think this is, yeah. this is pertinent to what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, Miriam, Miriam Okola, I, yeah. whoever wants to address this, or, or, or either the the Sahara or, or, or Susan, was a case. A, a few years back, I think it was 2010, where a woman had been abused by her partner and she wore the niqab and it was required that she take it off in court and she didn't want to take off her niqab in court to testify. Now, surely, uh, it, by keeping it on, that was an impediment to justice, wasn't well, it? Or was rather, was she giving evidence against she her She had to husband. take it off in the end, yeah. No, but was she giving evidence against her husband? Yes, was she that was. The point? Yeah. Well, that makes sense, because yeah. if they want to, I don't know, show any signs of emotional scarring, as I just said, if yeah. anybody's giving evidence, right. then it makes absolute sense. It's the and juror it's that doesn't make sense to me. Right. Right. Where they are listening and the taking in information. Deciding. Barbara. The juror is deciding. Okay, Barbara. The juror is deciding and the juror is playing a public function. So it's not like, you know, going along to meet your friends in the pub or playing the poker game, whatever it is, you're performing a public function. And if the rule I mean, is... <laughs> no, I'm yes. sorry. What a juror does is really important, and we've been very hard a member to keep of the jury. jury. I don't recall ever system. having eye contact with the judge. In fact, we never conversed with him. We went into a separate room no, but as a you jury. Look, you and look we conversed. We had no eye line. You know, the, the, the jury is supposed to be impartial, and in fact, the idea that you could be perhaps a, a defendant who who's having being looked at by someone's going don't like the look of that and it's not the it's not the role of the judge to go right she pretty much she looks she, like she thinks he's guilty think, she thinks he's guilty that's being... not the job Barbara, think and you remember are. the judicial the judicial guidelines You're... do say only if the defendant has a problem with okay, it let's say or, the Barbara, Barbara. or the prosecution or the prosecution let's hear your response to that or the prosecution because it depends what the case is about both sides in the adversarial process are entitled to know how the people whom they are trying to persuade are reacting and covering your face is not acceptable, I'm afraid. I, I promise to idea. come to I no. promise to come to this I lady here. We're kind of I mean we've moved back onto it now, yes. but we seem to be conflating mm -hmm. two different arguments. And one is the argument of the freedom of women to wear what they want when they're walking mm -hmm. down the street. Mm -hmm. And the other is a freedom in, in court. Now, court has certain conventions. Yes. We spoke earlier about um, girls walking down the street in next to nothing. 
Um, we wouldn't expect a judge to accept somebody walking into the court in a bikini and thinking that that was okay. There are certain conventions in court, mm. and one of the conventions in court is that justice is meant to be transparent in all but cases where somebody's um, physical well-being is at issue. So sometimes people can testify from behind a screen, but that's usually people who are are testifying who are scared, who are threatened or in minors, some way. Or what, yes, it's about exactly. such it's a woman who's just been abused. Yeah. It's about choice. Right. Well, I, I think, you know, although we are arguing, we do actually agree on a lot here, which yeah. is that the guidelines are very good. They're very detailed, they're very nuanced, they allow for many different scenarios. And broadly speaking, we're saying that in certain situations, apart from the jury where there may be different views on that, and that again is to the discretion of the judge and possibly other members of the court, broadly speaking, yes, women should have their faces visible just as men should in courts. It's very Absolutely. small cases in which we're talking, and there should be allowances. Mm. I think it's important to mention that a jury is supposed to be a jury of your peers. And if you're going to say that niqab women are not allowed on a jury because of their veil, then you are taking away a section of society that is a peer to someone in, in court. Well, that's so that's, that's, if I was a new carp woman, I would Barbara, be last, last for a woman Wait, a jury. Last word, Barbara. I think that if women serving on a jury in a public function make that choice that they would prefer to pursue their personal wish to cover their face to performing the public function, that that's their choice, but they can't perform the public function then. Thank you all very much indeed front of an audience, some of whose faces I couldn't see and I couldn't see how they were reacting to what I was saying. Do you have to see all of them? I mean, I can, perhaps people can understand if the entire jury had their faces covered, but one out of eleven, surely you, you, you would get an impression. Well, it's an all or nothing principle, Is because that one person's view might be decisive in the discussions in the jury room afterwards. So I think what the judge was trying to do yeah. was to ensure a fair trial. It may be that when that particular lady was called to jury service, it may not have been fully explained to her that the judge result guidance, which is given by the Judicial Studies Board for judges in this situation. And what the judge was having to think about was the right of the defendant to a fair trial. Uh, and the UK court process is very much based on face-to-face -face encounters where people call evidence in front of a live jury and judge. Mm -hmm. And the jury and the judge have to assess that evidence and decide whose side they prefer. Um, and I think what the judge was thinking about was, well, putting myself in the position of the defendant, how comfortable would I feel giving my side of the story in Now, on Monday, a judge at Blackfriars Crown Court asked a woman to stand down from the jury because she was not prepared to remove the veil on niqab, covering all her head except her eyes. The trial was for an attempted murder, and the judge said it was desirable that the court could see her facial expressions. Is a niqab a barrier to justice? Barbara, why do you think it is? Well, the judge was applying judicial... Uh, ...the face veil in a, in a court of law, and I think it's a testimony to our uh, to the judicial service that there's very fair guidelines in that regard. So I think that's a very positive thing. The only thing really with regard to this case is that I, I'm not sure that the argument that he wasn't able to read her facial expressions was a particularly legitimate one. That's the only reason really I would take issue with it. I would say, what about my friend who's an excellent poker player and has fantastic poker face? You couldn't read his facial expressions. I'm not certain he would have been asked to leave the court. ...of the right to consider these issues and to, to form a view, because he's the judge and ultimately he has to decide these things. And people may not be happy with his decision, but it's his duty to make that decision. So maybe she didn't have that fully explained to her. In other cases, it may not be such an issue. Miriam Francois, right, if it's an all-or-nothing situation, if it is a point of principle, do you think somebody, anybody, whether it be for religious reasons, whatever reasons, should be allowed to cover their face in a courtroom if they so desire? Jedi Knight, whatever. Um, I think there are very good reasons that might be applicable for asking women to remove 